welcome back for another video. Won't be long now and I'll be doing a review video of this uh, Give Energy 5.2 kilowatt hour battery and AC coupled inverter. So that's an AC coupled without hybrid. It's not connected to my solar panels. It's a direct connection into the house supply. 3K, three kilowatts, that's what it can provide max. Um, it's supposed to be able to do it continuously, but doesn't seem to. Anyway, more of that in the review video. Today's video, what I want to do is cover exactly what I've been doing first thing this morning. Woke up at silly o'clock this morning and realized I had enough time to do a proper discharge test. So I've tested charging it to 100% to see how much energy it takes to fill it up. Now I'm gonna discharge it all the way down to zero. Well, 4%, that's what it allows. And we'll see how much energy is actually taken out of it, how much usable energy and how much it reports. So that's what's coming now. So I'll talk you through the screen prints that I've taken along through the test. And uh, well, here we go. Let's see what actually happens. OK, to start the test off, we need the battery at 100 percent. So it's five o'clock in the morning. The battery's discharged down to 62 percent overnight. So I need to now top it back up from the grid to 100 percent. So we need to change the mode that is in and change it to a timed charge mode. And a quick check looking at the My Energy app to see how much energy is going into the battery to make sure that it's actually started charging. Uh, I did notice it took a few minutes before the um, mode that I changed to actually took effect and it started drawing from the grid. So maybe it's every five minutes it checks for mode changes as well, as well as updating the stats on the app for the battery. Quick look at the battery stats to see that we're at 62% of battery state of charge before we start charging it. And uh, yeah, watch that energy out total showing 0.6 kilowatt hours. That's our starting point. And of course, energy in is currently zero kilowatt hours. And a check of the state of charge history shows that it's going up nicely. Now we're charging at 2.8 kilowatts. And this chart confirming that the give energy battery is seeing that we're importing from the grid 2.8 kilowatts so all agrees so far looking at the physical battery stats we're at 69 percent state of charge but we've got five temperature sensors there one you can see at 33 degrees c that must be the inverter and the other four sensors are four positions inside the battery pack and we're varying between 12 and 14 degrees c quick check of the time it's 5 25 in the morning now and we're charged back up to 74 percent and we're still doing 2.8 kilowatts going into the battery i think i forgot to say that these images if you're new to my channel and new to this sort of uh, technology this is the information available from the my energy app so it's the app that's monitoring my home consumption the battery the uh, solar panels my eddy hot water heater and my zappy car charger 5.47 now and 87% state of charge. And as we start to get close to the 100% state of charge, I notice that the charging rate drops. So it's dropped from 2.8 kilowatts down to 2.3 kilowatts. And yeah, I think it's about 94, 95% state of charge. With the battery stats only refreshing every five minutes, I keep an eye on the My Energy app, which is refreshing every 10 seconds. And the moment I see that we're not charging the battery anymore and the battery is starting to power the house, that's the time I can start to record the information for the charging side of this exercise. Accuracy is one of the things that I'm interested in here. So one of the exercises I need to do is turn everything off in the house. So the only thing that I'm going to be consuming electricity from the battery is going to be something that I can measure, something that I can control how much energy there is. So everything gets turned off. Here I've even turned the fridge off. And on the My Energy app, yep, we can see it's virtually nothing so it will be rounded down the only things that are on at the, this time are the house alarm which will be a couple of watts the zappy charger and eddy devices in standby so they're about one or two watts each and the two inverters for the solar panels they're no more than five six seven watts each i'd imagine maybe up to 10 each but you know, we're talking 20 watts maybe total for everything that's consumed in the house at the moment Quick look at our starting point by looking at the Solar Edge app because that's quite accurate for import and export and we can see 2.22 kilowatt hours consumed so far from the grid. Quick check of the battery, yep definitely 100%, we're not charging or discharging anything at the moment. 1.9 kilowatt hours of energy has gone into the battery today and 0.6 kilowatt hours have come out so far today. So that was from midnight until the 5 o'clock in the morning when we started this, 0.6 kilowatt hours is what uh, ran the house on the battery overnight. 
And now a quick look at the My Energy app. And yes, it's reporting 2.5 kilowatt hours of consumption, 2.5 kilowatt hours from the grid. Now I do know that the My Energy app is always over reporting slightly by a few tenths. So that seems to tie in quite well with the Solar Edge app at 2.22 kilowatt hours, which I know to be very accurate. Just a quick refresh of the Solar Edge app to see whether it's gone up at all before we actually get started. And yep, 2.25 kilowatt hours. Yeah, there's obviously a delay with these apps on getting them accurate and up to date. So I try to have a little gap in between things that I'm doing to try and make sure it's accurate. And we're off. I've turned on a 2 kilowatt fan heater. So that's what we're seeing coming through now. Remember, the My Energy app is always rounding up and it's also a little bit optimistic. I very quickly turn on another 500 watt heater to see whether we can get up to 2.8 kilowatts and make this test go a bit faster. But as you can see, it starts taking the energy straight from the grid. So I have to turn it off again. And then lastly, I think I turned the last thing off, which was the fridge. And uh, yeah, 2.2 kilowatts is now what it's showing from the app. And that shows consistently through the rest of the test. But again, it was a 2 kilowatt heater that uh, I turned on. 20 minutes into the test, the battery temperature has risen up to between 17 and 20 degrees. Quick look at the state of charge graph, and we can see we reached 100%, stayed there for a short time, and now we're on the way down discharging. And also the uh, AC demanded power, that's nice and consistent, around 2.2, 2.3 kilowatts. I take another look at the stats on the My Energy app, so it's the stats for today, and it's still showing 2.5 kilowatt hours, which... Um, I would have thought it'd be going up. From the main front screen, we can see 2.2, 2.3 kilowatt hours coming out of the battery and going to the house icon on the app, but it's not adding up for these totals. So a little bit odd, I think, that the My Energy app is not reporting an increase in house usage when it comes from just the battery. So nearly 40 minutes now, and we're down to 69% state of charge. There's a different showing on state of charge in this view, but that's because this more detailed view of the battery pack is the actual battery state of charge, where the other figures shown are the usable percentage of battery that are available to use. So there is a slight variation between the two. Temperature now up between 18 and 21 degrees C. Another quick look at the Solar Edge app, and we can see that the import from the grid is now only at 2.28 kilowatt hours. So it's gone up 0 0.03 of a kilowatt hour. So it really does show that all of the energy is coming from the battery. Export remains the same as well, so that's not affecting the numbers that we're collating here. Something I've noticed on the Give Energy system is when the solar um, is really, really low, i.e. the sun is just coming up, the inverter comes on, but we're not getting any power through, then it still shows about 80 or 90 watts of generation. So on this chart here, um, the slight blue is um, the generation, so that's right across the zero line, and that's showing about 80, 90 watts. If I zoom in and just look at the generation, you can see it more clearly. You can see a little spike appearing for up to the 80, 90 watts, and then it's more consistent. This is to do with the inverter coming on. So as soon as there's enough sunshine that the inverter starts to power up, it comes out of standby mode. The Give Energy battery seems to detect that and seems to inaccurately show 80 or 90 watts of generation, where in fact there is none. Uh, what I've actually done now is turned the inverters off. I've isolated them so that there are no solar panels on. We're not going to have any distortion of solar energy coming through. And now it's dropped all the way down to zero. If you look at um, the very right-hand side of the graph there, you can see it's at zero in the last couple of time plots. Quarter past seven in the morning now, still 2.28 kilowatt hours from the grid. No more grid energy. State of charge down to 36%, and we're still drawing 2.48 kilowatts according to the battery app, but 2.2 kilowatts according to the My Energy app. And again, we know that we've only got a 2 kilowatt heater on. 7.34 now, down to 21% state of charge. Still looks like it's drawing 2.55 kilowatts from the battery. But of course it's not, we know it's less than that. The battery itself is getting to a nice warm temperature between 20 and 23.7 C. And at this temperature I'm starting to think perhaps I should try putting that 500 watt heater on again just to make it go a bit quicker. But no, still draws from the grid so it still won't draw more than the 2.2, 2.3 kilowatts according to the My Energy app. And yet this is a 3 kilowatt inverter, it's supposed to provide 3 kilowatts according to the specs and the manufacturer. 
And while I'm watching all these graphs, I notice something here that we can have a look at. Demanded power, 2257. Discharging power, 2562. So the difference between what we're discharging from the battery and what's demanded by the house, etc. So I take a couple of readings, look at those two, the difference between them. And if we do a little maths, we can see that it's 86.8% efficient, according to those numbers. And 88% in this instance. Now look at a couple more instances, 89.8% and another one showing 85%. So is this the range of efficiency that we're actually seeing from this battery? I'm not quite sure. Again, it's just data presented in a graph. What's true, what's accurate, what we can rely on? I'm not quite sure at this stage. 7.47 now and we're still at 2.28 kilowatt hours from the grid, so no grid energy used. The battery temperature is up to 22 to 25 degrees C, so much better, but showing 18% in the physical battery view and only 6% in the logical view. So we're almost there because it's going to run out at 4%. And there she goes, 7.49 in the morning, suddenly we're drawing 2.3 kilowatts from the grid to power the fan heater, so the battery has given up the ghost. So time to quickly turn off the fan heater so that we can see how much energy has been used. And there we have it, 5.1 kilowatt hours energy out today. Take off the 0.6 that we started with, that's 4.5 kilowatt hours come out of the battery down to the 4% minimum. This is where it gets a little bit odd though, that we've just charged the battery down to a physical 15% of the battery left. That's 85% of the battery discharged, a depth of discharge of 15% left. Yet the logical view we just saw a moment ago said 4%. So it's 4% of what? 4% of a logical 90%? Well, if it's our usable battery, why doesn't that say zero? And yet they do say, Give Energy have told me, they can change it so that we can discharge down to zero. That's instead of 4%, down to zero. So that would leave nearly 10% of physical battery left. It's all a little bit confusing and a little bit unnecessary. It should be a little clearer in my view. So now that the test is finished, it's quick rush back out to the garage, turn the solar panels back on and get that battery charged back up. Now for the boring bit, or is it the best bit? 5.23 kilowatt hours is the battery size. 4.5 kilowatt hours is the energy that uh, the app from Give Energy said that we took out of the battery. So that is 86%. That's pretty close to the 15% depth of discharge. So, so far, so good. The Give Energy stats agree. Yes, whichever way you look at it, 85% of 5.23 kilowatt hours is roughly 4.5 kilowatt hours. But what we know is all we used was a two kilowatt heater for one and three quarter hours, one hour, 45 minutes. That's 3.5 kilowatt hours of usable energy. Even if we use the value of 2.2 kilowatts that we saw on the My Energy app for the one and three quarter hours, that's still only 3.85 kilowatt hours, not four and a half. So in my mind, that leaves us with only two things to do. One, to prove the kilowatt power rating of that heater by turning it on and measuring it in a reliable way to make sure that we can determine, is it 3.5 or 3.7 or 3.8 kilowatt hours of usable energy that we actually extracted and used in the house? Then compare that number to what the app said, how much energy we drew from the battery, the 4.5 kilowatt hours, and that will tell us the difference between the energy lost in the battery and the usable energy delivered into the house. And that's what I'm really interested in in this discharge test, how much usable energy is inside that give energy battery. Is it only three and a half kilowatt hours from a 5.23 kilowatt hour battery? And does that mean that the efficiency is only 78%? Okay, so turning off all the same components, just leaving the fan heater on in exactly the same way as the previous day's test. I've basically waited until five o'clock in the morning on the next day and measured on the Geo Minim house device. So this is a um, house energy monitor that's connected directly to the tails behind the um, meter, the mains meter, and should be giving a reasonable accurate reading. But I must confess, I don't find it particularly accurate. It's a very good indication, but it seems to be 
um, maybe 30, 40 watts out every now and then, and I'm not sure why that is. It does say on the back that this monitor isn't suitable for use in solar configurations, but in the middle of the night, with just drawing from the grid, it should be no different, especially when I've got the solar panels turned off as well. Okay, and lastly, the Solar Edge app, which I find is quite accurate, is showing 2.24 kilowatts. So that's pretty accurate, isn't it? 2.2 on the My Energy app, 2.24 on Solar Edge, and 2175 on the Geo Minim. Let's put that into the calculator. Okay, apologies for going around the houses to get to these final numbers. 2.24 kilowatts times 1.75 hours is 3.92 kilowatt hours used. And let's even add in a little bit of time. So 2.24 times 1.76 hours just to cover those extra turning on the 500 watt heaters just to see if I could get the load up for a few seconds each time. So according to my calculations, that gives a final round trip efficiency of 87.5%. So on that potentially sobering thought about how much energy you can get out of the battery, I'll leave you for now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope there was some content there that you enjoyed and more videos to come soon, including a proper review of the Give Energy battery, talking more about the app and what I find good about it and anything that I haven't found so good. It's not such a bad solution, especially for the money. Thanks again for watching and see you again soon. Bye for now.